Hey everybody, it's Michael from Wahoo Comics here with another Comic Collector Spotlight where we talk about how the stories we love become a part of our own personal story. Today, I'm really excited to have a special guest, Marco from Switch Comics, uh, who I met just a few months ago through the magic of the YouTube algorithm. Uh, YouTube has found out that I love comic books, and so they recommended some of the videos he put together to me. And I took a look and I really enjoyed what I watched. And so I ended up leaving a few comments on a couple of videos. And you know, we started exchanging some comments on our videos and finally decided to work together on a couple of videos. And so I'm really happy to have him today. Uh, thanks for coming on, Marco. And first, just wanted to ask, how did you even get into collecting comic books? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, funnily enough, I'm, I'm pretty new into the comic game. I've always been in the nerd world, um, but primarily working on action figures for the better part of probably over a decade now. I've been collecting action figures. Um, and it wasn't until I started working at a comic shop that I got into comics, funnily enough. Now, granted, I started working at the shop, you know, because we also have Funko Pops and action figures and stuff like that. Not strictly just the comic shop. Uh, so my interests are still there. They're still aligned. Um, however, just being around comics constantly and, you know, having to learn about it for, for my job. You know, I got to now I have to know what keys are and this and that and learn about, you know, condition and everything. And the big thing was uh, starting to do the pools, the weekly pools for everybody. And, um, you know, you see, I mean, there's constant every week there's beautiful covers that come out, you know. <laughs> and um, there was one. Uh, that really caught my eye, or really it was a set that caught my eye, and it's these Power Ranger, it's called Draken New Dawn, these foil covers, and I'm just an absolute sucker for foils, hmm. um, and I'm a pretty decent Power Ranger fan of the, mainly just the Mighty Morphin series, but um, uh, Draken extends off of that. I know, we, we talked previously, I know you don't know too much about Power Rangers, so I'm not gonna <laughs> bore you with Power Ranger lore, but uh, that, that's more or less how it started. I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just pick up just this, just this point. Okay, well, there's another point. Okay, I'll, I'll grab another, you know. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, it evolved. I was like, okay, well, I guess I can grab that one too and this. And then uh, I discovered Peach Momoko. I love her artwork. Um, and, you know, then I just started picking things up. And then I was like, well, I guess I might as well read a few as well. And then now I have over 50 books on my pull list. So. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, and what are some of the favorite things you enjoy about the hobby or maybe a story or two that uh, really sticks out to you about collecting? And now you've only been collecting for just a year you shared. And so it's really impressive how much you've been able to put together and learn about comics in such a short time. Uh, but <laughs> in that little time, uh, what, what, what really sticks out to you about the hobby? It's, it's funny because I think no matter how much you've accomplished you're always thinking to yourself, man, I wish I wish I did more. <laughs> and uh, but I mean, you know, if I take a, a step back and I think about it, I'm like, OK, I, I got some pretty good stuff for only a year in. And um, that's just part of who I am. I've, I've been a hustler since I was born. <laughs> I, you know, I've been working since I was eight years old, making money uh, in, you know, high school. I worked I worked every weekend. Uh, you know, I wasn't out there partying or anything. I just it, whatever I do. I go absolutely hard in, and uh, that's why I don't drink, for example, because I, I, I know how I am, and I, I know um, my limitations to be safe with myself. Uh, I don't feel bad about it when I'm collecting stuff, because I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's money sitting there, you know, it's, it's, it's not like it's just gone, you know, if I just drag it all the way, it'd be gone, but uh, <laughs> um, I, I, let's that's just how I am. I, I find things and I, when I'm interested in them, I, I learn as much as I can about them. Uh, that's actually what I used to do. Um, it's funny because I didn't read a lot of comics, but uh, when I would just be, especially like for, I'm a big Star Wars fan and I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't go reading all the comics to figure out all the information about stuff. I'd just be collecting action figures and be like, that's a cool looking character. Let me spend the next hour on Wikipedia and whatever else, you know, reading about them and learning what, what this person did or whatever. And I, I mean, I spent a lot of my time doing that, like throughout high school and stuff. Um, that's more so where a lot of my knowledge um, for like lore of different characters from Star Wars and Marvel and, you know, mm -hmm. anything. 
That's just, that's how I found out about things. I did have some comic books. Uh, have you seen like the action figure? They don't really do them anymore, but the action figure packs that'll have the comic books in them. Uh, no, I have, uh, maybe I have. And back when I was a kid, when I was collecting, I remember the action figures back then used to have like a mini comic in that. Uh, I don't oh, know. Like the little ash can things. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I'm, I, you know, I was a big He-Man fan and mm -hmm. you know, get the figure and have a little comic. So I guess it's something like that. Uh, no, they, they'd had full size comics and actually okay. some of them can be uh, kind of valuable now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's certain collector ones, like for example, you know, Spider-Man 2099, that beautiful red foil. Mm -hmm. um, there's a action figure of them that has a reprint in it that goes for way more than, you know, that's, you know, maybe at most a $20 book. Sure. Uh, well, well, except for the newsstand, newsstand's a little bit pricier, but you know, whatever. But the uh, reprint, instead of that red border, um, it's a white border. Mm. And that thing goes for like a few hundred dollars. <laughs> wow. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a harder one to find. And it's, uh, you know, sure. I, anyway, um, but the action figure repacks is the only way that I used to pick up comics. I didn't go out to comic shops. Uh, I didn't know where any of them were until I was probably really like kind of late high school, out of high school is when I started going to some, but when I was going to them, I was going to get action figures. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I never really read, like I said, until I started working at the comic shop, uh, you know, a year or so ago. And, um, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I remember you coming up. One thing I remember you're going to share, you, when you first started going collecting, you mentioned like, yeah, you're kind of an all in person. I, I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I derailed entirely. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me back in. Sure. Um, I don't, I don't know where I was going with all that. Just little tidbits of knowledge, I guess, about me. However, <laughs> I guess we'll talk about we'll talk about a book that I spent a little while hunting down. Um, so, like I said, when I, I find something that I'm in love with, I have to I have to go all out. And this is a book that's very hard to find. We have all new Ghost Rider, uh, number one, the one in twenty five variant. Um, it is the first appearance of Robbie Reyes. It's a, a very cool story, uh, very significantly important to me. Uh, as a Mexican American, we don't, we don't have a lot of a lot of heroes out there to represent us, and you know, it, not necessarily saying that you know it, I had to have uh, you know that that be my favorite. It's not necessarily my favorite character either, but it's one that does mean a lot to me because it is such a cool book, such an amazing, beautiful cover. Yeah, um, and it was one that you know I was on eBay constantly just scouring, scouring, scouring. Um, uh, weirdly enough about this, like on the slab, on the details and stuff, they don't put one in 25 uh, ratio. So if you have somebody, um, like if, if you didn't know this was the one in 25 and you're like, okay, well, I'm just gonna list on eBay. I'm just gonna put, um, you know, Smith variant. And uh, it, so you can't really search for one in 25. So you have to search on, uh, on the ghostwriter um, variant and then scroll through all of them. And there's a bunch of different variants. and uh it, it takes a lot of work and then you go through every book on ebay and it's like okay well i found two <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same two that have been listed for three months <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh I, I did a lot of work finding that one uh trying to find one at high grade it's got a, a black cover and a black background so you know it hits you know, with the double whammy on that one yeah uh it's a hard book uh to you know make sure you have in that nice high pristine grade there's just not a lot of this book that is even out there. And so I found a 9.4, got it for about $200. And uh, since then I've seen a couple go uh, that, because at the time that was the highest grade I'd seen. And I, that was another reason I was like, okay, well, like this is this is crazy, I gotta, I gotta get this one. And um, since then I've seen a 9.6 and then fairly recently I've seen a 9.8, but both of those went for much more money. And part of it, I do think that the there's just more interest in the book as well. So I think sure. even, if I were to put this book up for, you know, for an auction, I think it would get much more than 200 at this point. Um, but regardless, you know, <laughs> this one's definitely staying. Uh, there's a lot of comics that I, I think a lot of my comics are, uh, have a price point. I don't know if you think about your books in this one, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm like, I love this book so much, but you know, if it, if it got to be worth sure. this much, then it's, it's, you know, out the door. But this is one that it, if I don't have another one to replace it, it's not going anywhere. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, 
I have a few that are like that. Yeah, like, and I probably never will get a replacement for it. Yeah, the one, yeah, my JIM 85, you know, I'll yeah. probably never get another one of those. And I mean, I guess there's some price it could hit. <laughs> yeah, if somebody offered me a million yeah, dollars for I mean, it, yeah, okay, sure. sure. <laughs> but yeah, but it would take a lot to set yeah. up me from that one. But uh, uh, yeah, my, my goal in collecting is usually, and we'll talk a little bit more on the video I do with you, uh, maybe to try to get multiple copies of a book yeah. and, you know, and then wait till they, you know, spike in value and then find which one is the highest grade, hold on to that one for my own personal collection and then unload uh, the other ones. So hopefully maybe you can find a, a replacement copy for that and then you can let it go when it goes uh, way up, but. I mean, it, it'd be it'd be crazy. Uh, I mean, I'd like to, I've actually had a kind of an interesting uh, idea I've been uh, tossing around in my head anyway. Um, some people, and I think a lot of people actually, do try when they're collecting multiple copies, they're like, okay, I got to keep the highest grade and right. sell off the other ones. But I've been tossing around the idea. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want a trashed copy, but sure, it's like, sure. maybe I, you know, maybe the 9.4 is good enough, you know? Sure. Yeah. I've been looking a lot more at, at 9.4s, 9.6s, even 9.0s. Because mm -hmm. um, a 9.0, I mean, it's a beautiful book, you know? Yeah. Um, if you're just looking at it and it's on your wall and you don't, you know, if you're not putting any monetary value on it, because if it's just going to stay in your collection, then it's not really worth anything if you think of it that way. Right. Yeah. So it's like, maybe, you know, maybe I do start collecting the other ones, but then there's also the selfish version of me, which is like, I got to have the best things in the world. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the battle I'm finding. I'm telling you what, today, tomorrow, I might have a different answer. I might be, yeah, 9.0 is good enough. And I know some people who just collect low grades, you know, like that's, yeah. they're just like, hey, I just want a copy of this book, you know, because it's just a piece of history but it doesn't really matter at all what it looks like to me. And so that's one of the, I think, really inter interesting things about the hobby. You know, we all have different goals of what we like to collect. And you mentioned, I think earlier, and there's kind of like an, obviously an infinite, seemingly infinite number of books out there. And so there's yeah. like lots of collectors <laughs> collecting in lots of different ways. And there's no right way, you know, to do it, just what brings you joy. And, uh, and, and yeah, I think that's cool. I, I, I've, I've weighed, I'm trying to figure out, yeah, if I want to do more of what you're doing too. Yeah, maybe not like a complete trash copy, but hey, you know, like an 8590, that's good enough. And uh, and especially, obviously, if I did have a higher grade copy and I sell it, then I can put it into other books that that I love. And, uh, you know, something we were talking about that's hard for me is that I'm trying to get better at that, you know, it sounds like you, you've mastered a little more than me is being able to, to let go of uh, some of your your books yeah. that you love to, to find, to, to get another book that you love even more. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we previously talked about, um, at, you know, off, off camera, I, I told you about, I sold my, uh, Invincible Iron Man nine recently. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that was uh, a hard one. Cause I got that one back and it was a nine, eight and I love Riri Williams. I'm super excited for, um, well, she's gonna be a black Panther first and then, you know, right. get her own show. And I'm super excited and I have, uh, you know, a bunch of other keys and, you know, just looking at the value on it. And I was like, man, that book is, is up there. You know, <laughs> like it's a, it's a big book. It was the biggest book that I, I had. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to list it on eBay and, you know, see if I get any buyers. If I, if I don't move it, cool. It's still my book. You know, I get to keep it. It'd be awesome. But if I do get to move it, I get to look at, keys that were previously unattainable to me mm -hmm. um and you know or just not necessarily unattainable but i just didn't feel comfortable spending that much money on sure. your book but you know when i make up that much money or more it's like okay well now now i can get that book that i was wanting yeah <laughs> and it, it, it's a hard call um i also recently sold off my uh, new mutants 98 and i had a 90 on that mm -hmm. um and there's uh, two big books that are coming up in, in my haul video for next week that uh, both of those kind of, uh, one fully funded, the other, the, the Iron Man fully funded um, one book and then the New Mutants partially funded. 
a very large book um, that I'm very excited to be able to show off and add to my collection. Very so, cool. Well, maybe that's a good point to end off the interview because I wanted to give you a chance to plug your channel. And it sounds like you've got an exciting uh, video <laughs> coming up where you're going to show off these two new books that you got. Uh, I encourage everyone to check out his channel at Switch Comics. I'm going to leave a link uh, in the description below, but it's uh, a, a channel that I've enjoyed, watched several videos on it. And uh, Marco, why don't you tell us a little bit about your channel? Of course, you know, it, like this one, it deals a lot with comic books. Uh, but what, what are there one or two things that you especially like to do on your channel? Well, I think um, our channels are, are, are pretty comparable. I mean, obviously, we're different people have different personalities. And that's what really brings people in, you know, it's just having the difference of uh, opinions, but also just our, our character. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we live in a similar world. Uh, we talk about, on my channel, you know, we talk about comic speculation. Uh, I show off my weekly pools. Uh, Cause again, like I said, I have over 50 comics and I keep picking up more. <laughs> so, you know, if you're interested um, and being that I work at a comic shop, I, I read them a day before, don't tell anybody, you know, but as you know, so I put those videos up Wednesday morning. So maybe you can listen to it on your way to the comic shop to see if you want to pick up a book. Cause maybe you're kind of on the fence about something. And uh, it, you know, if I give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you know, I, I try to be pretty honest, you know, I'm, I'm fairly easy to please, but at the same time, you know, if there's a book that I'm like, man, this one, it didn't do it for me, you know, I'll let you know. And maybe, you know, you can save a little bit of money and a little bit of time and be like, yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, cause it does suck, you know, it happens. You, you read a comic book and be like, yeah, I kind of wasted some time and some money there. But, uh, okay, on to the next thing. Um, and other than that, I'm kind of in a transitional period on the channel uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because it, it's just kind of what happens with any channel, I think. I think, you know, the longer it goes on, you kind of figure out a little bit more of what you want to do and the direction you want to go. But on top of that, I'm also moving at the moment, which is why you see basically nothing on my shelves behind me. <laughs> and um, it's going to... Uh, it's going to have different opportunities for us. Uh, my brother, uh, which I don't know if I mentioned this to you, uh, my brother's actually going to be starting to work at the comic shop with us. Um, and currently, he's been working late night shifts, and he doesn't get home until, you know, two, three in the morning. And so he's really only on, um, like, a haul video. So it's the only videos he has the time uh, to be a part of. Um, so you'll be, uh, be able to see more of him uh, soon. Uh, we're changing over. We used to do weekly haul videos. We're going to do more monthly haul videos now uh, with the inclusion of some skits because we are children and we like to play dress up <laughs> and, uh, you know, swing around lightsabers and blasters and, and have a good time and make some, some voices and, and do some fun things. Um, I think it's going to start off uh, a little basic, but the goal is the further along we get and the more we invest into getting costumes and, and doing the whole thing. Like I want it to be a very, uh, very in-depth uh, and, you know, semi-professional kind of, kind of thing, you know, and uh, I have a lot of fun in um, that kind of industry. I do, I do a lot of video or used to do a lot of video editing. Well, I guess I still make YouTube videos, but <laughs> uh, as far as like, you know, doing more in-depth video editing, um, I do a lot of sound editing. So currently I do voiceover work. And so I'm happy to combine all these worlds together to have a big nerdgasm. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and yeah, so just, you know, just keep an eye out. Uh, things are, things are growing, things are changing and yeah. uh, hopefully for the better. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Sounds like you've got a lot of awesome content coming up. So again, everyone uh, check out his uh, channel. The description is in the bottom of this video uh, and consider subscribing to his channel. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to mine, I'd appreciate if you consider doing so. Uh, comment on the video, tell us what you think about some of our ideas or any ideas you have about things that we should consider when collecting comics. Uh, thank you for watching. Of course, like the video if you'd like. Uh, and I enjoy doing this video with you, Marco. Really appreciate you taking your time to come on uh, and to help me out here. And uh, I look forward to being on your channel sometime in the near future as well. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for watching and look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you.